documentary ready or not. So please give it up for Ella. given name it's a nickname um, I started going by Ella when I was 16 uh, because I don't really like my full name my full name is Eliana which is a nice sounding name uh, a Hebrew name which is weird because my family aren't from that side of the world uh, I'm Portuguese and my grandparents are from Guinea so I don't know where my mother came up with Eliana but that's fine uh, and the other day a friend of mine said uh, when did you start going by Ella? And I was like, oh, when I was like 16 or so. And she's like, oh, okay, do you ever go by L? And I'm like, no, but I can see myself shortening down to L eventually. And I had this thought, what if every 16 years my name just gets shorter and shorter? <laughs> so I was born Eliana. At 16, I was Ella. At 32, which is not far away, <laughs> um, I'll be L. Uh, at 48, I'll just go by E, an initial, nice and simple. Love that for me. Uh, at 64, don't refer to me. <laughs> I'll do the first thing where I'll change my name to a symbol. Um, I'll identify as a Natasha Bedingfield song because the rest will be unwritten. <laughs> yeah, I'll tell you how we came up with Ella though. It was a collective effort. Um, my mum had this Croatian friend who was crazy, but she was very kind, and that's important in a friend, crazy and kind. Um, and she started calling me Ella one day, and I was like, okay, cool, I can see that for me, I could be, I could be an Ella. Um, so yeah, I started going by Ella pretty much exclusively since then. And I asked her one day, hey, so how did you come up with Ella from Eliana? It's like, oh, that, that's a great story. Uh, I used to have a dog called Ella. <laughs> <laughs> Cool, <laughs> love that for me. Uh, a cute dog? It's like, yeah, yeah, a bull terrier. <laughs> cool, you mean the one with the snout? Not even a pit bull, so that my alternative nickname could be Mr. Worldwide, no? <laughs> no, um, bull terrier, yeah, it's nice when you compare a teenager to a bull terrier, because it's not like you're already going through puberty and reckoning with every part of your existence. <laughs> but yeah, no, I started going by Ella, and I quite like it. And I think it suits me, but you know, we'll see in years time if I ever shorten my name down. So I got my notes here, because I haven't done this in a while. Uh, yeah, so uh, it's weird because Ella is the pronoun for she in a lot of like Latin languages. So like Portuguese, Spanish, etc. Um, and it's weird when <laughs> your name is like the embodiment of womanhood when you're going through a spicy little gender crisis. <laughs> um, yeah, like, I've been sitting down just thinking critically a lot for the last two years because I've just been inside for no reason. No reason. I just wanted to sit inside for two years for no reason. <laughs> uh, and yeah, it just made me like think critically about gender and existence and like, why is gender a thing? Um, I also joined TikTok in 2020, so that's probably why <laughs> I was thinking a lot about things. And yeah, it turns out thinking very critically about gender is sort of tied to like autism and ADHD. Because um, not only am I on potentially non-binary TikTok, I'm also on, hey, you should probably get checked out for a neurodivergence TikTok. <laughs> because algorithms know us better than we know ourselves. <laughs> So yeah, that's, that's a fun time, and yeah, like, sure, I'm a woman, but like, Barbie is also a woman, but she's also a doll. Do you know what me and Barbie have in common? All of this is plastic. <laughs> I'm joking, I'm pretty sure my boobs are real. Although they have gotten bigger, but that's pandemic weight, so <laughs> I'm sure we can all relate. Run over to my notes, it's gonna be a fun little bit, just me running to and fro. <laughs> So yeah, with gender specifically, I feel like there was a bit of nepotism involved because my parents gave me my gender and I'm not sure that's right. <laughs> you know, my mother was a woman and I feel like, I don't know, I feel like I'm not qualified for the job. I feel like every day I wake up and I'm like, 
Google what is woman and then just do whatever Google tells you to do. And it, it's very difficult. If anyone knows any job openings in the gender department, let me know because I'm not sure womanhood always works out for me. So yeah, that's a fun little time I'm going through. Uh, what's everyone's New Year's resolution? Does anyone have a New Year's resolution? Go to the gym. Go to the gym, yes. I like it. Yeah, I know it's like the end of January, no one cares anymore because I want to smoke, I want to drink, whatever. I don't want to improve my life in any sort of way. <laughs> but I like to ask people because I like to see how they like to improve things. My New Year's resolution is, well, I have two actually. Uh, I want to stop being a little goblin person and improve my posture. <laughs> uh, I also want to rebrand myself as sexy. <laughs> Can you tell I work in marketing? I want to rebrand as sexy. <laughs> um, yeah, just because I think it's time. I think it's time to stop worrying about my gender and just worry about being sexy. <laughs> Which is obviously easy for me as a little awkward goblin I am. <laughs> um, but yeah, like, but the thing is about rebranding as sexy, you kind of have to put yourself out there. Which I'm not good at doing. Because <laughs> yeah, sure. People are sexy. I could be sexy, but I think I'm just the embodiment of anxiety in a meat suit. Kind of like Lady Gaga at one time. Uh, but yeah, I think mostly I just don't want to go on any more bad dates. I've been on so many bad dates. I did this thing when I was 25 where I went on 26 dates on the lead up to my 26th birthday. Most of those dates were bad, I'll tell you that much. Um, one showed up an hour late, one didn't show up at all, <laughs> one treated it as like a job interview, we sat down um, across from each other very formally, um, and he just quick fire asked me loads of questions, uh, and I was answering them, and then he was like, cool, um, don't call me, I'll call you, see you later. <laughs> that was fun. Um, had a date, throw up. That was fun. Actually, that wasn't technically on the day, that was the next morning, because uh, I used to fuck. <laughs> <laughs> Heavy emphasis on used to, because gorgeous, gorgeous girls haven't had intercourse in two years. <laughs> um, yeah, so, the thing about me is, well not the thing, there's lots of things about me, but I am bisexual, so you would think I would have more chances of dating people. No, it just means I have more chances of being rejected, <laughs> which is usually the case. Um, but yeah, I'm attracted to every woman, every non-binary person, and two specific types of men. I'll tell you one specific type of men I'm attracted to. Uh, ones that look tired. <laughs> because, because, I'll tell you why. <laughs> I'll tell you why. Um, because you don't know whether they've been up all night doing drugs, are they like a bad boy, illicit drugs, or are they just tired from carrying all of that audacity? <laughs> <laughs> you never know, it's a puzzle I always love to solve. <laughs> but yeah, talking about um, red flags is quite trendy at the moment. Red flags, what's your red flag? My red flag, well, again, I have two red flags. One, I love to lie down all the time. <laughs> Not in a sexy way, I just love to sleep. <laughs> My second red flag is I, I'm not attracted to people unless they're two counties away from me. <laughs> if you live in the same city as me, good luck. <laughs> it's not gonna happen. Um, and yeah, I feel like that's slightly problematic, but I feel like I'm more suited to long distance relationships because you can like Every couple of weeks or so, I can just like create this illusion of an interesting, charming person. I know it's hard to believe I'm not that all the time, but no, I have to create this illusion. You have a romantic weekend for two or three days, and then they fuck off back to where they live, and then I can go back to being a small little goblin person for two weeks, and then I can repeat the whole process two weeks later. And you know, that suits me. I, I like that very much. And I tell this to people, they're like, I'm like Ella. You know, it's okay to be an introvert. It's okay to sleep for 20 hours a day like a cat. People should fall in love with you because of who you really are as a person. 
And I say, no. <laughs> I feel like the best relationships are based on lies. <laughs> I feel like you should create an illusion of a fun, interesting, dynamic person, and slowly over time, reveal those flaws. <laughs> because by the time they fall in love with you, it's too late. <laughs> or, you can just move into the same city and then break with them. <laughs> Why do I do that? Maybe I'm afraid of intimacy? I don't know. That's between me and my therapist. That's none of your business. <laughs> no. So you can tell why it's hard for me to rebrand as sexy because obviously anxiety in a meat suit. <laughs> but mostly, you know, I feel like I do need to release my inhibitions. I do need to feel the rain on my skin. <laughs> no one else can feel it for me. <laughs> Only I can let that in. <laughs> no one else can speak the words on my lips. <laughs> I need to drench myself in words unspoken. Live my life with arms wide open. Because <laughs> today's where my book begins. <laughs> The rest is unwritten because I don't want to be perceived. Thank you very much, everyone. <laughs>